Shalom. Prophet Jay Smothers, and this is 20 Minutes with the Prophet. 20 Minutes with the Prophet, and we give you, we overload you with scripture pertaining to that particular topic uh, for 20 minutes or more. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so let's get right into it, brothers and sisters. We are starting a new series uh, entitled Battle Ready for Temptation. Battle Ready for Temptation temptation uh the misconception brothers and sisters is that when you come into this truth is going to be all roses that is going to be easy uh that is going to be simple that all you got to do is accept christ uh keep the commandments do a few high holy days do some sabbaths and you're in well guess what brothers and sisters that does not uh, relieve you of temptation, the temptation uh, to go back into the midst of sin. And we want to make sure that we equip you, brothers and sisters, uh, with everything that you need uh, to prepare for that and also avoid that. Hallelujah. All right, so let's get right into the scripture on today. This 20 minutes with uh, the prophet. Let me set my timer. Hallelujah. And then we're going to go right in. Let's start with 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Here's what it says. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And you've heard that several times, brothers and sisters. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Uh, but what does that mean? What does that mean exactly? Uh, does it mean that you are exempt uh, from any of the challenges that you uh, had to deal with uh, previously? Does it mean that uh, once you accept Christ, you are immune to temptation? You are immune to attacks? You are immune to life's circumstances? No, brothers and sisters, that's not exact. That's not at all what it means. Uh, what it means is now that you are a new creature, you have to uh, begin moving as a new creature. Hallelujah. And how do you do that? All right, let's let's go. Let's first go to the next scripture, James chapter 1 and verse 2. Look what James 2 says. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, when you fall into different and various temptations. The Bible says count it all joy. How do you count it all joy? Like, what does that mean? What's so joyous about having my lights cut off? What's so joyous about uh, uh, having an ex uh, hitting me on Messenger and, and I got to uh, I got to deal with that. What's so joyous about people trying to pull you in uh, to the ways that you used to live? What's so joyous about that? So what, what is James talking about when he says count it all joy? When you fall into diverse temptations, we're going to show you. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. Look what it says. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. So you can count it all joy because it's common. It's a, there's no temptation that's going to come to your life that's going to hit you that someone else hasn't already had to deal with. Hallelujah. And so you have to be mindful of that, brothers and sisters. And look what else it says. But God is faithful. That's how you can count it all joy, because the most high is faithful. The most high, Yahweh, is a faithful, uh, a faithful Elohim. Hallelujah. And so we have to understand that because he's faithful, right? The temptation don't have to take us out. We don't have to fall victim. We don't have to succumb uh, to its temptation and to its lust uh, for desires. All right. It says, 
who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Hallelujah for that thing. So, so I know that if there's something that comes to my life, if there's a temptation that I have to deal with, if there's something that I have to address that might pull me in, guess what? The Most High knows that is not above my pay grade. Hallelujah is not above what it is I can handle because he promised that he would never put more on us than we can bear. Hallelujah. So if he put it on you, then guess what? You can bear it. You can bear it, brothers and sisters. Let's read on. Let's read it again. It says there had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But, but, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. So guess what? There's always a way of escape before you go to that hotel room, brother, or with a woman you're not married to. There's a way of escape. Guess what? Because you got to literally go get in your vehicle, start up the vehicle, and begin driving. Then you got to navigate if you don't know where you're going, right? You got to get there, find out what room she's in, right? That's a lot of opportunity for you to escape. Uh, but many of us, brothers, don't take that opportunity, right? Uh, but I'm going to show you today why it's important that you take those opportunities uh, to escape. All right, so let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew, chapter number chapter number 26 and verse 41. Matthew 26 and 41. Look what it says. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And see, many people use that as a cop-out, as an excuse. Oh, well, brother, you know, I, I know I, I, I sinned. I know I fell. Uh, prophet, I know, I know I messed up. But, hey, the spirit was willing, but the flesh is weak. No, nah, brother, that's not an excuse. That's, we know that the flesh is weak. That's why Matthew, that's why uh, in Matthew we read where it says watch and pray. Christ is letting us know we need to watch and we need to pray. We need to watch and we need to pray. Pray what? that ye enter not into temptation. Pray that your spirit is built up. Pray that your flesh dies. Hallelujah. Pray and watch. Watch and pray. Watch out for the situation. You know your weaknesses. You know your devices. You know how, you know what it takes for Satan to tempt you into the midst of sin. And because you know what those things are you got to watch out for it don't put yourself in the situation of uh, that will cause you to have an excuse oh the flesh was weak no brother watch and pray hallelujah all right so let's go to james chapter 1 and verse 12 james 1 and 12 it says blessed is the man that endured temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life which the lord had promised to them that love him. So the Bible says that blessed is the man that endured temptation. No, blessed, blessed is the man that, that bought a new car. Uh, blessed is the man that bought a new house. Blessed is the man uh, that have money in the bank, have money in his pocket. Blessed is the, no, the Bible doesn't call that man blessed. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Why is that man blessed? For when he is tried, meaning when he when he overcomes, he shall receive the crown of life. Which the Lord had promised to them that love him, them that love him, how that keep the commandments. Hallelujah. And you're going to find out, brothers and sisters, that enduring temptation all comes back to keeping the all right, let's go to James 4 and 7. Look what James 4 and 7 says. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. What does that mean? If, if you're submitted to the Most High, meaning you're keeping the commandments, guess what? You can resist the devil. The, 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 the commandments and the laws are designed to help you resist the devil. And when you resist him, he will flee from you. 
You're not exempt from attacks and from temptation uh, and from the seduction of the devil. Christ wasn't exempt. But what did Christ do? Christ gave him the word, for it is written, for it is written, for it is written. And this is what we need to learn how to do, brothers and sisters. For it is written. Now, was Christ keeping the law, statutes, and commandments? Yes. Was he exempt from temptation? No. And neither are you, brothers and sisters. That's why we have to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove when dealing with people. Because when we're dealing with people, how many of you know you're dealing with people, that's when the most, the bulk of your temptation will come. Temptation to slap somebody upside their head sometimes, right? When they, when they start to deal with you recklessly. Oh, she must not know who I am. You're tempted to fall out of the spirit. Like my wife and I were watching a video of a sister in a, a long skirt and fringes, head covered in Walmart, acting a plum donkey. Acting a plum donkey. Did she consider that she had on fringes? No, she succumbed to the to the temptation of the devil. You know, you're gonna act a fool. Right? So we have to we have to resist the devil, brothers and sisters. All right. So let's go to James. No, no, no. Let's let's go to Ephesians next. Let's go to Ephesians. One second. All right. Let's go to Ephesians chapter four, verse twenty seven. Look what it says. Neither give place to the devil. So the Bible says resist the devil. And then it says neither give place to the devil. So how do we resist the devil? How do we not give place to the devil? All right, let's go to Ephesians 6 and 11. We get, we're almost finished. Six, Ephesians 6 and 11. Watch this. It says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So when we put on the whole armor of God, the Bible says that we can stand against the wiles of the devil. But what does that mean to put on the whole armor of God? What does it mean to put on the whole armor of God? Let's drop down to verse 13. Look what it says. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of of righteousness. So how do we resist the devil? How do we stand against the wiles of the devil and the trickery that he would try to place in our lives? We stand by having our loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. What's truth? What's righteousness? Let's get that. Let's get the precept. Let's go to Roman. Let's go to Romans chapter number 10 and verse 5. Romans 10 and 5. Look what it says about righteous. It says, For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law. What? It says, Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. The Bible says that righteousness is of the law. So then if the righteousness is of the law, then what's the truth? Let's go to Psalms 119 and verse 142. Psalms 119 and verse 142. Look what it says. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Wait a minute. So we just learned that righteousness is of the law, and we're learning how righteousness is everlasting, and then we're also learning how the truth is also the law. You can't get around it, brother. You cannot get around it, right? So it would behoove you, especially if you want to stand against the wiles of the devil and you want to resist temptation. It's important, brothers and sisters, for you to learn exactly what the Bible says the laws are. Exactly what the Bible says the laws are. Again, keeping them in the faith of Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ. Understand that. All right. So what does it say? Let's go back. Let's go back 
to Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 14. It says, Stand therefore, having your, lo your loins girt about with truth, with the laws, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Breastplates of, of righteousness are the laws. So we behoove you, brothers and sisters, to learn what they are and begin keeping them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so let's move on. Let's go to Matthew 5 and 48 because it's important uh, that we be perfect. And people say, oh, you, no man can be perfect. Yes, because the Bible says you can. Look what Matthew 5 and 48 says. Christ says, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So how do we be perfect? Because the misconception is that there were nobody else but Christ that was perfect. But that's not the truth. Because the Bible sp speak about other people in the scripture that were perfect. Job was perfect and upright. Hallelujah. So what does it mean to be perfect? All right. So let's go to Psalm. Let's go to Psalm chapter 19 and verse 7. Psalm 19 and 7. Look what it says. The law of the Lord is perfect. You see that? The law of the Lord is perfect perfect converting the soul the testimony of the lord is sure making wise the simple so the bible says that the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul meaning when your soul is converted you're converting into perfection now do we have it all together no we don't have it all together are we perfect now no we're not perfect now uh, but we are striving toward that perfection. We are learning every day how to continue keeping the Most High's law, statutes, and commandments so that we too can be perfect like Christ told us the Father desires for us. Let's read it again. Matthew 5 and 48. It says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Hallelujah. You can be perfect. Don't let anybody tell you that you cannot. No matter, no matter, let anybody tell you or give you a, uh, an excuse. No. Nah. In order for you to resist the temptation, in order for you to stand firm, in order for you uh, to put on the breastplate of righteousness and the whole armor of God, you, brother, you, sister, have to learn how to be perfect. What makes us perfect? What converts us? The most laws it's simple it is it is simple it is as simple as abc one two three it is simple brothers and sisters but many of us have been sitting under teachers and sitting under doctrine that tells us you don't have to that tells us it's sin to obey the most high the madness brothers and sisters creflo dollar said that it's sin to obey the most high's laws what how is it possible for it to be sin to be obedient? Hallelujah. But you have these teachers who need medication, I believe, because they suffer with madness. They're teaching you a doctrine that is full of madness. Full of madness. And we got to repent from that, brothers and sisters, and turn back to the Most High's Law, Statutes, and Commandments, in the faith of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, who the world knows as Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. All right. So let's get the last scripture, and that's going to be in the Apocrypha, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, uh, chapter 2. And we're going to read verse 1 on down to verse 8. Watch what it says. Verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, Prepare thy soul for temptation. So we, we, we have to be prepared. How are we prepared? Be prepared, just like I begin to tell you. Start keeping those law, statutes, and commandments. That's how you prepare yourself. All right? That's how you be prepared. You don't want to be caught with fringes, a border blue, a long dress on, sisters, and you out in, in, in the public acting a fool. You don't want to be caught like that. All right. That's embarrassing, not only to yourself, but that's embarrassing to your nation. Because people won't see all the good that we do as a nation. 
they will look at the one bad seed, the one rotten apple, and then label the entire nation based on that one individual. So you have to understand that you're not just representing yourself when you go out. You're not just representing your spouse when you go out. You're not just representing the most high when you go out. You're representing your entire nation. You're representing all of us, how the world views repentance through uh, the faith and belief system as an Israelite. Oh, that's how they act? Like, yeah, brothers on the corner cussing out people as they pass by. Oh, yeah, that's the, that's the Israelites right there. No, that, that does not represent us as a nation of people. And so the more of us that conduct ourselves according to the scripture, uh, the more we can begin to uh, uh, erase uh, those bad seeds and those rotten apple images and memory from other people's minds. Hallelujah. But it starts with you, brothers and sisters. All right. So verse one, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You got to prepare yourself. Verse two. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. You got to constantly endure, brothers and sisters. It says, and make not haste in time of trouble, meaning return back to the most highest law, statutes, and commandments when you fall, when you mess up, when you slip. All right, verse three. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at the last end. We cannot depart from these laws. We cannot depart from what the most high has set up for us. Uh, to keep and to consider and to practice how to live. All right. Verse four, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. So if you fall, you know, if you, if you, if you uh, uh, run into a snag, the scripture says uh, 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 that we ought to rejoice when we fall into diverse temptation. All right. Rejoice for that thing. Cause that means that the most high is still dealing with you. So get up, repent and do it better. Hallelujah. It says, but whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with the most high. Be patient with the process. Hallelujah. If you would happen to fall to a lower state. All right, let's get verse five. It says, for gold is tried in the fire. Guess what, brothers and sisters? You don't know, but you are gold. You are pure gold, right? So gold has to be tried. Gold has to be tested to make sure that it is gold. All right. And it says an acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. If you want to be considered acceptable, you got to go through the furnace of adversity. Understand that. But as you're understanding that, no, remember, you have to stand. You have to stand ye therefore uh, and be ye perfect. Hallelujah. Verse six, believe in him. He will help thee order thy way aright and trust in him. So the most high is going to help you. If you continue to believe, if you continue to trust the process, he will help you. I don't care if you court about a situation. I don't care if someone has to come to your house, you have to pay a fine, whatever your situation is. Guess what? Believe in the most high's process. Hallelujah. Trust in him. Verse seven. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside lest ye fall. So don't try to do it your way. Wait for the most high's mercy. Wait for his grace. Wait for him to come in and deliver you out. Hallelujah. Your job is to just continue keeping the most high commandments in the faith of Christ. Uh, be ye perfect. Trust the process. And don't go out there acting a fool. You do these things, brothers and sisters. Your resisting of the devil will be easier if you do these things. Verse 8. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. So the Bible says that if you believe him, if you fear him, which means you're keeping the commandments, your reward shall not fail. Hallelujah. So you got to understand that, brothers and sisters. All right. You got to understand that. So let's close with Ecclesiastes. Chapter 12, verse 13. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the most high 
and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man all right brothers and sisters that's the class I want to thank all of you for joining. Thank all of you for tuning in. And also, don't forget, brothers and sisters, don't forget uh, to go to the new YouTube.